Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of ZI Reacts. We do not have these very often because we do not have enough brand new stuff usually to react to. But this is a special occasion because we just came off Switchmas, or at least day one. Day of one is yeah, day one. Because then we might have a ZI Reacts 2.0 for day two. Uh, but that Breath of the Wild, baby. That's what uh, we're here talking about. Oh we got, a, we got a, some semblance of a story trailer, and that's all I've wanted since the game started getting these trailers. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've seen enough green fields to last me, but this trailer is just everything I wanted and more. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and joining everyone, so just so everyone knows who's on the CI Reaction. Obviously, there's me, Daniel Ruffle Jance, editor in chief of Zelda Informer. We have our podcast host and editorial writer that writes one like one every three months now. <laughs> Alfred Alfred Tabax. Um, yeah. We also have uh, one of our new staff members, Andy. I'm going to totally butcher this last name. Uh, Speedery? Spidery? Speed, I have no uh, yeah, you, yeah, you butchered it. Yeah. Uh, Spiteri. Sp oh, Spiteri, yeah. Spiteri, folks. Nice oh, to meet you. I've never gotten that. Uh, and we also <laughs> have Mr. Eric Moore joining us from over at Nintendo Prime. What's up, guys? Hi. Hello. So, man... Let, let, let's just get, like, the big thing out of the way, which is a lot of big things. This is Breath of the Wild. It's a Switch launch game. Yes. I like how they trolled us right till the end, too. Oh, it, it was crazy because it was coming, like, to an end. They had, like, all the credits and all the stuff going on, and I'm just like, okay. They went over time with this. Yeah. That's what we I'm were... I'm like, they're, they're, so no Breath of the Wild. What, what happened to Breath of the Wild? Yeah, we were <laughs> all counting down. I mean, down. they showed... The, an amiibo for it at one point, but <laughs> yeah, they well, trolled I mean, us the thing hard. Is too, like, did any of us think that this was going to end without Zelda? But but I was I was sitting there sweating, like like what is going on? Yeah, then they're like, oh, then we're going to go over to Nintendo Europe, Nintendo America, and it's just people. Okay, they're just going over to the Switch events. I'm like, that's it. Yeah, but if you oh, watch carefully, yeah. then you see uh, Miyamoto in the background playing Breath of the Wild and Reggie's. So mm -hmm. you, we yeah. knew it was coming. And I figured it would be Reggie to talk about it, because Reggie's been the one that's pushed it more than anyone. So he appeared mm -hmm. on uh, Jimmy Fallon with it sure. to first show it off as Switch footage. So I, I figured that it would have something to do with him. I didn't think we'd see Miyamoto and Aonuma there. Um, can you say that name for me, Nate? Well, I had a feeling... Okay, once I went to Reggie and I saw he was at um, the... It looked like Nintendo New York. Um... I had a feeling that we were going to hear something because of that rumor that hit yesterday that someone spotted E.J. Aonomu over at Nintendo New York mm -hmm. um, going upstairs and recording something. And this is obviously what was recorded. So the Miyamoto part was what was shocking because the, he wasn't spotted. Um, so somehow they snuck him in without anyone seeing, but E.J. Aonomu was seen. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it, as soon as I saw that, I saw the Breath of the Wild in the background, I had a feeling that maybe... This was when they were talking about it, or maybe it was just going to stay a tease and it wasn't going to be anything until tomorrow, um, which I think would have would have been really bad. Um, and I'm not going to get into the whole Switch presentation on why it would have been extremely bad if this didn't end that way. Um, we'll talk about that. That would have just completely later. taken the wind out of the sails for the oh, whole yeah. thing. It, it would have been a disaster. Yeah. I was talking to some friends during the thing, and and if you didn't, if you had Mario in the fall and you had Splatoon in the summer. What you know? What else can you possibly do but launch Zelda with it? So when they weren't, when they weren't even showing it, what they... one, one two switch isn't good enough? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> See, the thing is that I was thinking is we first off we didn't get a lot of like confirmed launch games. We only got basically the two: the Arms game and then the one two switch. Or is Arms supposed to be summer two thousand seven? I yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think Arms <clears throat> is summer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like so we only have right now confirmed one two switch and. Now Breath of the Wild. And if they didn't announce at least one more launch game, they were going to be in trouble. <laughs> and th this is kind of sidestepping for a second, but Nintendo needs to announce more launch games tomorrow. Like, we, we need to be aware that this isn't just going to be... Yeah, like... it, it might be... Uh, I think maybe the reason they didn't do that in this one was because they wanted to... Uh, maybe the rest of the launch games are different. Like, it could be region-specific. Maybe. Maybe. Um, like I could see there being some indie games very well either. and some smaller titles. Like like maybe Skyrim is a launch game in U.S. but oh, it's not true. like Japan. Well, I could mm -hmm. see it being a launch game in the U.S. because that game's already been out for so long. Yeah. Well, and it's made by United States. Studios. Yeah. 
Well, and if they wait any longer, I feel like it's going to lose a lot of its luster, too. I don't know. I don't think Skyrim yeah. will ever lose a luster, but... but... <laughs> I, I guess, but that's, uh, yeah, exactly. it just came out again, so... Exactly. Uh, so, reversing this back to Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Um, because something just popped up from Darren mm-hmm. that makes me cry. Uh, there is a Master's Edition. Does it make you cry sad or happy? Because that's... A oh, Breath of the Wild. A Master's Edition. Uh, yes. I have no uh, idea how much it costs. It's probably a fortune. Imagine Doesn't about matter. $100. But here, here's the thing. It comes with a Master Sword statue. It comes with a Nintendo Switch Sheikah Slate carrying case. Uh, we get our first look. I think this is the first look we have at what the uh, box art is and what a Nintendo Switch box is going to look like. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also get a 24 song soundtrack CD, a Sheikah Eye collectible coin, which probably the same one they showed at E3. It looks exactly the same. Yeah, it does. Um, and then a relic of Hyrule, Calamity, Ganon, tapestry, and weather worn map. Mm-hmm. I don't know what this costs. He just threw it. It literally like this just landed. Well, it's Somebody just been on it Nintendo's press site. So, yeah, it could be. No, yeah. that's that's where it's from. Is they got, okay, we yeah. we talked about it earlier. Is that it's from Nintendo's Sweet. press site? I don't know if we have. Let me, let me check real quick, but I don't know if we have pricing. So, Yeah. So, obviously, Nintendo's going all out. Um, they've done these collector's editions before. This is beyond any that I can remember from Nintendo. Um, like, what were some of the best ones they've done? Like, Majora's Mask 3D, you got uh, a little... You got the... Oh, Skull Kid statue. Yeah, Skull Kid statue. And Wind Waker, you also got the Gandorf statue, Wind Waker HD. Um, uh, Fire Emblem Fates had a pretty decent deluxe edition. Yeah, earlier yeah this but year. I'm talking for Zelda. Like, this is. <clears throat> I, I I'm even remember thinking back, like, I, I, I don't remember any at launch packages that are like this. Like, you get a statue plus a case plus a soundtrack plus a map and a coin. Mm-hmm. There's also a, lot a of stuff. small. There's a small bundle as well. We don't really know what's in it, but it has different <laughs> box art for it that reflects the Breath of the Wild cover art um, for, for the the thing. I imagine that that would probably also be... this box art that that's new. Yeah, we haven't gotten yeah. that before. Uh, did, did they release a full uh, thing for it, like the full version of that art? Mm-mm. I haven't been on the press site yet, so I'm, it, I'm not. They haven't. Well, sure. they they did now. It's the full version of. The box art's on the press site. Okay. Um, cool. Um, so let's just get okay. So obviously this is just, a, I, folks. I you know as we're reacting, there's just more Breath of the Wild stuff just hitting. It's just this is just how it works on a day like today on Switchmas, the first day of Switchmas. Um, so let's get into that trailer because, I mean, ultimately we could talk about all, all this extras and all the various skins that have been unveiled over the past few days, but really that trailer. My Holy God. quarter, they show a lot of stuff. Mm, yep. What is your guys' favorite part of that trailer? Uh, the whole presentation. Well, the the <laughs> cinematic presentation to it. I mean, I mean, it sounds it sounds small, but like, man, it just it looked great. It looked very story driven. I mean, I was just uh, doing a feature for Skyward Sword, and like the launch trailer for that was just Link swinging his sword around and showing the <laughs> the Wii move. So. Yeah, man, just the the trailer for that, just the whole way it was put together was awesome. Uh, yeah, for me, um, I liked that too. I liked how we see cutscenes that weren't just like in-game character models, kind of like moving a little bit more. They were actually rendered cutscenes, um, and I really liked how Link emoted like a normal person, um, because in Skyward Sword he would like switch his face from like. Happy to sad, kind of like uh, Toon Link did in Wind Waker. Um, so it really wasn't naturally switching. Um, but like this game looks like it flows more. Uh, so you see character spaces transition. Um, I like that we're having voice actors. I might, if there's an option, I'm probably just going to keep it on the Japanese voice actors. Um, <laughs> I, I heard heard the English trailer wasn't as much a fan. Um but that that remains to be seen. I need to hear more about more from them on it. But uh, we'll see in yeah. terms of that. But but I really liked uh, that we see more of the characters because this was sure. more of a story character trailer. Um, we heard Zelda talk. We assume it's Zelda. Um, we have no reason to believe it's not. We saw <laughs> a Gerudo. We saw a Goron. 
We saw Zora. We saw Karok. We saw one of those bird people um, from Rick and saw Morty. Saw a great fairy, I'm pretty sure, in there. Who? I think there was a great fairy in there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 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 the white-haired great fairy. Because um, mm -hmm. she had the, the giant chest, so it was a great fairy. Um, but yeah, <laughs> we we got a lot of a lot of new characters that we didn't know about um, in that trailer, and some some tidbits of story. So that's what I liked about it. Yeah, um, Eric, what was your favorite part of that trailer? Oh boy, uh, I love the music. The music in that was phenomenal. Um, I, I yeah, I. I'm a music guy, so... Yeah, and what, what I liked about the music specifically is that it's new. We've mm. been hearing that same theme song from yep. E3 in, like, everything. Even in, like, the gameplay footage that they showed at the Game Awards. Like, oh, here's the song that you learned from Cass, and it's the music from E3. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, that music, that yeah. was... That was Excellent. In fact, I almost like it better than the music they put in and the E3 trailer because remember there was that one point in the E3 trailer where the music like broke up mm -hmm. and like changed gears and it felt really awkward. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that wasn't in this music. Yeah, no, definitely it flowed really well. Um, we actually did watch the English version of the trailer, and I am definitely satisfied with the voice acting in it. Yep. So, um, I just so need to me, hear more. Yeah, it, it, for me, this, this is, it's hard, like, you know, I'm, I can see why you guys talk so much about different aspects of the trailer, because it's so hard to be like, oh, what's your favorite aspect? There's so much good stuff in this trailer. Um, and even when I posted on Facebook, I, I, I put a comment on the saying that I think this is the best Zelda trailer I've seen in a decade. Um, and, I, and I don't think that's an exaggeration. You mean you don't like the rap video from, uh, what was it, 1980 or something? Well, I said in a decade. Okay. That, that was like 30 years ago. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I, I, when I said a decade, I was kind of thinking of that Twilight Princess trailer back in 2004. Um, that The feeling from that trailer was, was really epic at the end. And I kind of had that mm -hmm. same feeling at the end of this one. Not just because, oh, my God, they confirmed a, a Switch launch date. Like, that's amazing. I mean, I was jumping for joy when that happened, but I was already pumped beforehand. Um, and it's because... I, I think overall how the trailer was put together, uh, you know, from the music build up and the fact that there really wasn't a dull moment in the trailer. Uh, and some of the other gameplay clips and trailers we've seen of Breath of the Wild, there's been some dull moments, which in games, there, there's downtime. Like, that, that's part of gaming. But when you're showing a trailer, you really want to show the best of the best. You don't want to have that downtime in a trailer. And there wasn't downtime in this trailer. Uh, and... You know, talk briefly about the voice acting. What I found most interesting isn't necessarily that, uh, you know, you know which voice acting is better, whether it's the Japanese or it's the English. It is what it is. I really like the English voice acting, but obviously, uh, everyone's gonna have their own opinions on if it. You know, I don't think anyone, I don't think anyone's gonna say the voice acting's outright bad. It's just you know, a lot of people prefer Japanese with well, English see, dubs. I, I like, I prefer dubs. So, yeah, see, that's what I was saying. You, I think your opinion I'm, comes from the fact that you prefer it dubs. Me out well, I, I prefer dubs for the most part. Um, it, it, again, like I said, I'm just, I've been watching a lot of subbed stuff lately, so for me, I'm used to hearing that. Uh, sure. But it, again, like it remains to be seen. Like I wasn't a big fan of it because hearing the voices, it, it, the old lady voice sounded like someone pretending to be an old lady, um, and that's what kind of like got me there. Um, but again, that's all we've heard like small snippets of, yeah. of the voice acting, so, so I can't make a complete judgment on it yet. Yeah, so like the big thing with the voice acting to me, um, outside of you know whether or not you liked it or not, is there were five different voices in the trailer. Mm -hmm. So every character you know that they kind of featured had, had voices, and there were even characters like there was a moment when that Falco character came on the screen again, and then you could hear him laugh. Mm -hmm. uh, that was also a different like voice. It just it was just a laugh instead of like him oh, talking. Also, that that master edition was gonna be yeah. 130 bucks. Okay. Yeah. Yikes. Well, that I mean half of that's the cost of a game, so. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm assuming uh, 130 Canadian eh? or uh, American eh? Yeah, American. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's probably 200 oh, Canadian or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. 
So, you know, I, so the voice acting part, uh, what I, I guess the biggest takeaway from it, you know, outside of if you enjoy the quality of it, with five different voices and little hints at other ones, um, it almost feels like to me that it's possible this is a fully voice acted game. Do you think we'll hear um, Link voice acted then? Well, Link doesn't talk. No, no. We we have not seen a scene where Link <clears throat> says anything. I doubt he's talks. Outside of the high and well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think Link's gonna talk. I, I, think I suspect keep it it'll be like a like an RPG kind of setup. It's where gonna like be the like main characters effect. talk. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, but the fact that there was at least five and there was hints at, at more tells me that, um, you know, those rumors back in the day where I was like, oh, maybe it's just that one narrator, maybe it's just Zelda. Uh, no, there's a lot more than just Zelda talking here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, obviously we haven't heard if every character in the game necessarily has a voice. Like, do all those characters in every village have a voice? We don't know. We don't know yet. We're it's not just all Nolan North. <laughs> it's just all <laughs> Nolan North. But this is huge for Zelda. It's been avoiding voice acting for seemingly decades. Um, giving excuses at every turn why they should not do voice acting. Uh, and one of the excuses was always quality concerns. Mm-hmm. Um, now, as, as I said, you know, that's one of the concerns Alfred has. That's why, you know, he's hoping that there's an option to like, listen to the Japanese version and just have text on screen, which clearly there's an option to have text on screen. Mm-hmm. Um, like that's in the game, whether or not you could turn that off or not, don't know, but it, it, that's obviously there, I which hope opens the door to being able to use like other, o- other localized languages mm-hmm. if you want. Um, cause honestly, if all the localized languages are done, like there's no reason not to just include that option in every version of the game Yeah. on just whatever territory it comes out in. Like the default will, is English or Japanese or Spanish, but you can select other languages. Well, from what, um, it, from what it looks like, it sounds like that as this has been going on, as, as, as they've been writing this dialogue, there hasn't been a localization per se, but they've been having Japanese voice actors come in and then English vo- voice actors come in at the same time as opposed to like completely dubbing it over as Japanese and then like okay well now we need to send it to Nintendo of America and have them do a complete dub over um which is great like that means that this is this is going to make the March 3rd release date that we've been hoping for as opposed to like some of the rumors that we've been hearing um from that it was going to be pushed back to summer for localization and QA testing um which is I'm I'm glad about that. I'm glad that we're getting it at launch. But that also means that they've been kind of taking a different approach to how they make this game. Then, um, kind of like they've been doing, I assume, with the Pokemon games to get a, a, a unified release date. Is that they, as they're developing it, or when they finish developing it, they give it to both companies or both sides to let them write the dialogue for it or translate the game. Sure. Um, but, again, the biggest news to me is that there's voice acting in Zelda. Yes. <laughs> like, I don't care how they made it happen. This happened. Um, I've been wanting this for so long. I'm so hyped about it. Uh, like, oh, no idea how much this makes me happy. Because voice acting, to me, in video games, especially voice acting done well... Uh, it doesn't have to be the greatest, but it just has to be at, at least acceptable. Uh, helps immerse me in games more. Um, because nothing is worse than you're going through a cutscene or you're going through various moments in a game, and I have to sit there and read text box after text box yeah. after text box after text box. And understandably, for some games, it's just the way it's going to be like indie, 2D, uh, top down, or RPG kind of games. Like, I, I get it, but in a fully 3D world, like voice acting just feels like that has to exist. It has to be there. Um, and hopefully I can turn text boxes off to be honest. Cause I, I just want to listen to the game um, and have those characters speak to me um, and draw me in. And oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just so pumped. Um, so uh, another aspect of, uh, of that trailer that I think is interesting to talk about, cause in, th- there's a lot of different things that, you know, we saw like, uh, we know well here's the aspect i want to talk about we know now based on one of the story teases that we're going to find out what happened 100 years ago Mm -hmm. um and there's been a lot of rumors or not rumors, more like theories speculating that that might be the case but now we know it's happening and it felt like there was a moment in that trailer that we got a tease of what happened 
um, there because there was a moment where it looked like, at least to me, that you were it that they were in the the town in front of Hyrule Castle, um, when it was being attacked by a guardian. Yeah, or something. A bunch like, of guardians guardian crawling over it. Picture. Well, there were a bunch. Yeah, there's was, a scene where a bunch of guardians are crawling over all the, the houses and they're on fire. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, you know how. Here's my question to you. Uh, how do you think they should approach, or they're going to, or how should, do you think they should approach that flashback more in a um, Sonic Adventure 2 aspect, or Sonic Adventure aspect, where you actually go back and play through that moment, or them just telling it uh, as like a story flashback? Uh, I like combinations of both. So like you play through uh... it? Only play it if it's done correctly. I can't think of a situation like that that's been done correctly off the top of my head. I'm sure there is one, but it, if not, it'll just the only, seem silly. Yeah, the only thing I could think of is um, that one girl that they feature prominently, which I assume is Zelda. Mm-hmm. Um, we Obviously, we cannot confirm it is Zelda. It does not say that anywhere. Um, but it definitely appears to be Zelda, just like the voice that says, Save my daughter. That might be the King of Hyrule. Mm-hmm. Um, which is huge because he's actually only appeared in one other Zelda game. In Wind Waker. Um, he's been mentioned and inferred to exist like an Ocarina of Time. It's inferred he's there in the throne room, but we don't actually see I think him. you're forgetting the CDI games, my friend. <laughs> the CDI games. Non-canon. Um, so, to, to me, I mean, there's obviously big news. That obviously, the King of Hyrule, or at least Zelda's father, is, is in the game. Uh, but... I, I think, you know, with those flashbacks, um, I think it, it appears to me that it's going to be flashbacks relived through Zelda's eyes. Mm-hmm. So I think there are moments where, because the father asks, you know, Link, save my daughter, uh, which is just she's in trouble. Mm-hmm. So I think there's going to be a moment uh, where you're going to have flashbacks uh, based on Zelda's point of view that's going to show, you know, just cut scenes. And then I think there could be a flashback where you get to actually go back and play part of Zelda's role, and that that might be where some of those original "There's going to be a female Link" rumors came from. Is that there's going to be moments that would be awesome where you can go back and play as Zelda during that time period, and it obviously we know it ends with something bad, but we get to play some of the lead up to that bad that ends in an epic cutscene that that ultimately brings back to the present to Link and his full understanding of what happened, um, and why he was put asleep or whatever. Um, cause, cause that could ultimately be what the gameplay session is. Maybe it's Zelda that, that put him to sleep and the gameplay session is being as her leading up to why they put him to sleep. Um, so I don't think it's going to be like huge. Like, I don't think we're, we're talking about, you know, 30 hours of gameplay here as Zelda. Yeah. Um, but, but I, I can see them throwing an hour or two in of going through some of this backstory that ultimately led to things and then having other bits and pieces of that backstory being explained to just cutscenes. Um, I know some people might speculate, oh, well, does Link travel back in time? Maybe. Time travel's been in this series for a while. Um, but, yeah. that I mean, it's just really interesting because it's just so much has happened, mm-hmm. clearly. Um, and we don't know what. We don't know why. Link's never been asleep for 100 years. I don't know what's happening. So, one I, of the things that this kind of hit me with too like this kind of confirms i mean not confirms but like <laughs> confirms. this kind of gives me the the idea that this is like the start of the downfall timeline um, oh boy is this the ganon thing well not necessarily not what bethany pointed out saying that or whoever it was that said only in the uh downfall timeline they've only mentioned ganon um mm-hmm. but like it i'm kind of thinking because if this is maybe the same Zelda or a different Zelda, or I, I don't know, but from what we've understood is that Zelda tried to stop Ganon, but from what she said is that everything she's tried was for nothing. Um, and that Link's been asleep for a long time in what looks like the Hyrule version of a Bacta tank. Um, mm. So I guess my theory there is that he was healing for a hundred years because he took on Ganon and then horribly failed and then over the years they've tried to prevent ganon from uprising but what when he went to sleep um at that hundred years is when this all happened and and everything went to hell 
uh, and so then we have <clears throat> we have a reason for why she's upset. We have a reason for why Link's been asleep the whole time. Sure. Um, aside from just oh, he's asleep because we he's asleep. <laughs> he's asleep because he can be. He's yeah. always asleep. He's just yeah. Um, Every Zelda think, game wakes uh, up with him waking up. <laughs> see, it's so hard because because. There's going to be even more timeline speculation bouncing off of this because mm-hmm. there, there's just so much stuff in there. Um, I'm still sticking with the fact that I think this is happening uh, as a, a game that brings all three timelines back together. And I'm going to keep going back to the age-old evidence of the eye test. Uh, uh, what do we got? We got Rudo is now confirmed in the game. No, uh, we don't have... I don't know if those are Yeah, there was, there was there was a Rudo, like a very clear Rudo shot. Of him lifting Link up in the air, I don't know what he was doing to him, but um, Rudo Rito, what? Not not the Rito, the Rudo. Yeah, um, Zora's in the game. Uh, that's huge. They look like uh, Twilight Princess Zoras. Yeah, they look like Twilight mm-hmm. Princess Zoras, but we have Wind Waker Koroks. Yeah. Um, so like everything still screams. There's elements from every single timeline in here. Which to me tells me this is the one that brought it all together. And there was some event that happened 100 years ago that caused that. Um, which this might lend into Daniel's Dragon Break theory. But, uh, which some people don't want to happen because then that means everything you've done in every decision made doesn't matter because it all has the same end. It doesn't really matter. It's Zelda. It all has the same end anyways. <laughs> uh, I remember reading the Dragon Break theory. I thought it sounded like pretty good, pretty sound. Well, that's the thing. Like, in Zelda, it's not like a game that has multiple yeah. endings. And like the the one time they kind of experimented with that was in, was on Spirit Track. It really didn't change the ending. It just changed, you know, like one little scene of Link, whether he's on a train or whether he's uh, in the throne room or whatever. Well, also like if you if you think about it, um, the whole Zelda series is about fate and destiny. Um, mm-hmm. Those are themes that are really prevalent throughout the entire game series. And so it, everything's going to end a certain way anyways, as much as people don't want to admit that. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like the first season of The Walking Dead game. Um, I, I don't want to spoil it in case nobody's played it. Has everybody played it on here? No. Okay. Zombies ain't my thing. Then I'm not going to nope. spoil it. But basically, no matter what you do in the first season, the game ends the same exact way. Um <laughs> And this is, it was a, it's, it's a heartbreaking moment because no matter what you do, you can do, there's nothing you can do about what's going on. And I feel like that's how Zelda, how the Zelda series has always been, is that you're going through um, as like an agent of the goddesses, facilitating this change, facilitating whatever they um, have preordained, but there's really nothing that you can do to change destiny. Um like that that's just how it, it how it seemed from the beginning sure. to me so I, I i could get behind that it it, it you know they're all going to end the same way and i still don't know how it would unify all three timelines um <laughs> i mean that's, does anybody know that's that's hyrule warriors that unifies all three timelines hyrule uh, warriors is not canon so it's okay it is to me it's canon to me dang it canon to me um no so it, I don't know. There, there's just so so many places to go. I mean, I, I just even setting the timeline aside. I'm just looking back at the trailer. You know, you, they show off the the one village that looks absolutely stunning. Mm-hmm. Um, it's only in there for like a second and a half. Like they they wanted to show up, but not really show a lot of it. Must be some good surprises in there. Um, I'm, I'm very interesting to see how what Game Explained discovers in that area. In that just to just to interject second. quick. Speaking of stunning, like. When the when the trailer started and the water was there, like I just thought, like wow, this game looks great. Like far, it looked far better than uh, than all the other trailers. Like the the other trailers looked, you know, like a pedestrian Wii U game, a, a good looking one. But man, this trailer just looked well. Switch, yeah, switch up. footage, baby. Yeah, switch it up. Um, yeah, it, it, and that was the thing. Uh, you know, I saw some people commenting that maybe they uh, the, this this d- doesn't look that much better than the Wii U version. You need to go take a closer look. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. one, the frame rates again showed clearly that they are way better than the Wii U version was. Uh, I personally, I'll have to go back and watch. I didn't notice any pop in. What do you uh, mean? Doesn't mean it doesn't happen. I just didn't notice it. And on Wii U, I noticed it all the time. It was everywhere. You you could you couldn't not tell there was pop in. Um, explain that. Pop in? Yeah. 
Uh, basically, things magically appear. Oh, oh, as you for like closer to them. the the draw distance. Yeah, uh, the draw problems. distance. Okay, I um, I thought you meant like sound popping. I was like, I don't. Oh no no no. no. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Pop, yeah, pop in deals that. with things popping under your screen as you move. Um, and obviously that has to do with draw distance. There's there's a lot of factors that have to do with it, but uh, yeah, it it definitely is better. On, on I even commented at one point. Uh. The, the, oh man, look at those horses! Like way down in the corner, that you know, Nintendo probably doesn't think anyone noticed. Like those horses are way off in the distance, and they're on the screen, which mm-hmm. means that draw distance is huge on the yeah. Switch compared to the Wii U. Yeah. Um, well, and these are the things that like better. Nintendo clearly intended when they said the game's not going to look any different. It looks visually like Breath of the Wild on the Wii U, but they're taking advantage of that extra hardware power to you know, make the game perform better and visu- and be visually more pleasing in that there's less things that take you out of the game mm-hmm. as you're playing. Um, and that's something I really noticed in all this footage and all the zoom arounds they did and the different areas they showed. Um, I mean, the hype is real for this guy. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are just tired or something. It if you the, guys hype are is, if the hype is not real, what are you doing listening to this podcast? Uh, yeah, let's, right. let's get realer. I, sorry, I'm watching the trailer again. That's why I'm not talking. <laughs> just keep watching it over and over <laughs> yeah. and over again. Oh, you can't, there's so much in this trailer. Just, just uh. put it on loop as you fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, just keep your eyes open staring yeah, at it Eric. and fall asleep with your eyes open. I'm just worried about getting in. a pre-order in for the, the Nintendo Switch. That's what I'm worried about right now. I'm worried about Dude. that uh, Collector's Master Quest Edition. Yeah. I, it, I'm worried. I'm worried about. I, I have to do more research like, on it because as we're talking here, there's all this news coming out now that I'm not paying attention to that I, I really should. <laughs> um, but I don't know. But let, let, let's kind of wrap it up because this is DI reacts. We're not going to go on for hours and hours and hours because this isn't a full podcast. But let's let's just go around the room and give our overall impression of Breath of the Wild now that we've seen it in the Switch. Like this is like basically the coming out party for it on Switch. <laughs> let's start with Eric, who has basically done no talking. He's over here working on Nintendo Prime, but doing a good job. But he, yeah, what, what, yeah. Do you, what do you got for me? Your overall impression of Breath of the Wild now? Wow. That that that's really all I have to say. That sums it all up in about one word. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this has been what I've been expecting and what I've been waiting for. So. So I'm gonna throw this question at Eric because I asked him in the Nintendo Prime pre-show. Now we know. Getting a Switch day one? You pre-ordering with me tomorrow? Oh yeah. Bam. Well, I don't know. I don't know how I can, considering that we're not going to load the kids up and just I don't drive know off. But it's going to happen. Yeah, no, it's going to happen. I'll load the kids up. It's happening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Alfred. What are, what are your overall impression of Breath of the Wild now? Um, I mean, it's it's been consistently the same. Is that this is the Zelda game we've been waiting for? Um. And the voice acting and the cinematics just are the icing on the cake for me because I've always wanted that in a Zelda game. Um, I've always wanted there to be a cinematic aspect to it to where the cutscenes are, you know, good. Um, and that they're actual, <laughs> like, nice rendered cutscenes. Um, that's Again, that was probably my biggest takeaway uh, from this. Like, that, 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 that moment where we saw... Zelda falling into Link's arms, crying, looked so oh. natural and it looked so well done that it just it just made me happy as a as a Zelda fan and as a Nintendo <laughs> fan. I'm like they they finally did it, like they this is nailed it. they've they've reached the point to where they've brought like that perfect cohesion between Western and Japanese gaming together for this, and I'm so excited. Oh, yes. Uh, Andy, overall impression of Breath of the Wild now? Oh, my body is ready. Uh, I'll piggyback off everything Alfred just said. It, it just, I, like, uh, oh, man. I was born to play this game. I cannot wait. Uh, it's <laughs> it's going to be it's, it's gonna be unreal. I just, I have never been this excited for a game ever. I don't think. I can't wait. <laughs> um... I didn't think it was possible, but I have reached a new level of hype that I probably haven't felt since I was a little kid. Uh, and I played this game for like three hours at E3. 
Uh, one of the first people to take down Steph Talis and get a video up on it, which is why it has so many views. One of the you know first people to attempt to see how many times, how many different ways you could die while being naked in the winter. <laughs> like, I, I, I did. I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun impressing the Nintendo employees on the show floor at the crazy things that a Zelda veteran is going to try to do in this game that they never even thought of. Um, that was a lot of fun. Filming, by the way, yeah. You're dying multiple times. Oh, yeah. Um, it, so it, it's one of those, and all and the funny thing with that was that it all started with I didn't mean for that to be the case. I was trying to get to a shrine while naked, and I totally went the wrong way. I ended up at the tallest point in the whole place, which is amazing that I made it there naked, but it was like the shrine was on the whole other side, so it just, anyways. You died and fell so, off so, the cliff. So then I'm just then... like, all right, let's just turn this into a death montage and see many different ways I can do it. Um, so, you know, whatever. It was fun. And, like, so I played the game. I played it on Wii U. I've been watching all the trailers. I've been hyped for this game ever since. Uh, I don't want to say since 2014 because I was a little skeptical in 2014. Uh, mm-hmm. I was excited. You know, I, I did say the game was perfect at the time. But, again, I still have this skeptical thing in the back of my mind. Okay, but that might have been a whole pre-rendered thing. What's the actual game like? Uh, and then ever since E3 this past year, okay, cool. I got it. I'm excited. This trailer just took my hype levels to a point where I don't think I have jumped up and down out of a seat about any game in my life <laughs> until this moment, outside of when I beat Eric and Madden. Well, right. Like, uh, one out of ten times. Yeah, you you j- literally jumped out of your chair, ran over to the couch, and punched the blanket multiple times. I was Yeah, not out of anger, out of excitement. Yes. I, I didn't know how else to let my... Like, I wish I was live streaming my reaction then, because it was one for the ages. Um but I was, I was watching on the couch and my girlfriend was sleeping and I, and I was trying to wake her up and I like smashed her knee and she wakes up like, ah, <laughs> I think my, out of this entire conference though, my favorite moment was when the guy from EA stood up because I know that this is where Nate got really excited and he said, we're bringing the biggest sports game. No, to... I, I didn't get that excited. Actually. You didn't get that excited. I thought you were no, like, oh, I knew he was talking about FIFA. Oh, okay. I, like FIFA, so. I thought you were. I thought you were gonna think he was talking about Madden. No, no I, I first I looked over at Eric and I was like, Madden. Oh wait, no, the biggest sports game yeah. in the world is FIFA. So yeah. okay, nothing like to be excited about for me. Second, it was like Madden. <laughs> no, I was so, like, no, wait, no. Big, so for like a split that, second, like Nate was excited, and America, then he wasn't. That was the biggest sports game in the world. Yeah. Um, which don't be wrong. I mean, I'm glad FIFA's coming. I just hope that means that other sports games are coming. But the fact that they didn't say they are. So I'm like, all right, well, they brought FIFA to Wii, too, so, like, big deal. Um, <laughs> I mean, for me, I'm happy for all the FIFA players out there. I mean, same thing, like, I get excited about Madden. I understand that other people don't. It's okay. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm just at this hype level with this game now that I didn't think I could possibly get to anymore. Here I am, a 30-year-old man, able to act like a little kid again over a trailer for a game that isn't even out yet. I didn't think I could do that. I didn't do that at E3, like when they were, had the big reveal trail. It, I, I was <laughs> excited, but not like this. I wasn't jumping all over the place. Um, there were a couple people that were doing that. Th- there were, but it wasn't me. I, I thought it looked good. I thought this is the Zelda game I always wanted, but man, voice acting, uh, the King of Hyrule potentially, time travel potentially, a hundred year history thing going on, uh, all these the, different the races stage. and Zelda coming together into a single game with new races on top. Oh, my God. One of the most gorgeous art styles for a Zelda game I've ever seen. Enemy types that look extremely exciting. Potential mini boss fights or full-on boss fights that looked epic. Uh, Don't know if anywhere in there if we saw dungeon footage. Because we have no idea what's a dungeon and what's not not a dungeon in this game. (laughs) Towns that looked magnificent. You know, the music was just so epic. And voice acting, voice acting, voice acting, voice acting, voice acting. Voice acting, thank you, Nintendo. I've been waiting, like, 20 years for voice acting in Zelda. I and and somehow they made it a switch launch game. That we think we we don't know if it's a launch game yet. It's March third. It's the same day as the switch comes out. It's a launch game. Did we? Was that confirmed? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, right it at the end, the end of the trailer. Of the trailer. It says March third. Oh, I didn't see that. Uh, that... <laughs> I was <laughs> like, like the biggest news from the whole trailer. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, uh, we sure about that? <laughs> the Did you biggest miss, like, news the, from the, the whole trailer. Of caps, Alfred like... missed it. <laughs> It's 50 oh. days, gentlemen. Oh, my gosh. Countdown I counted begins. 50. Right. Countdown begins. Oh, man. How about that early March release, huh? Mm. I thought yeah. for sure it was going to be like middle of March. Yep. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this version of ZI Reacts. Um, hopefully, you can feel some of the energy from some of us. Um, 
we're excited. We'll probably see you again uh, tomorrow for another ZRX 2.0 or uh, Zone 4 podcast. Whether or not that's ready to go up tomorrow, it might be not That's Saturday probably going to be a Saturday release. Yeah, it's probably going to be a Saturday release. <laughs> uh, but we'll see. We're, we have fun. Uh, I have to go on now and record some other stuff. But it's been fun. Yeah. Have a good one, folks. All cool. right. Good night.